All right, this is Vegeta 8259, and this is part seven, the final part of my perfect grade Gundam GPO-1 review. And I figured I'd just start out with a couple of size comparisons before we get on to my final thoughts. So anyway, here is the GPO-1 next to the perfect grade RX-78-2 Gundam. And as you can see, GPO-1 is just slightly taller. Not by much, but just a little bit. So, basically the same size, but I think GPO-1 has got a slight height advantage over the RX-78. Up next is another 18 meter Gundam, the Gundam Astray. Again, the perfect grade. As you can see, again, they're about the same height. And one last size comparison. Don't really know why I'm doing this, but might as well throw it in. Here it is next to your average sized master grade Gundam, uh, this time being the Gundam Verka. So that's just the size comparison between a perfect grade and an average sized master grade. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into my final thoughts on this kit. Now, first off, uh, I guess we can start with the pros. There are a lot of pros about this kit. Um, first off is just the fact that you can build two different mobile suits from uh, one model kit box, uh, being the GPO-1 ground type and the full burner space type. And uh, actually I'm getting paranoid that he's going to fall over on this spinning turntable, which he barely fits on. Um, and just the fact that you can do that, uh, make both versions of GPO-1, I think is a really good selling point for this kit that uh, a lot of people are drawn to. Um, another really good uh, point about this kit is lots of accessories and playability and displayability. You've got this great uh, MS cage here for uh, housing all the extra armor parts. You've got uh, two different guns, uh, four beam sabers. You get a nice collapsible shield, um, just lots of really nice things. You get several little pilot figures, uh, two complete core fighters, uh, which I thought was a really nice touch. And, I mean, Bandai easily could have just made the normal GPO-1 uh, full burner or just a normal GPO-1 ground type and uh, either just made one of them or sold them separately, but I think it's uh, a really nice move on Bandai's part that they... Uh, put forth the extra effort to make this a kind of all-inclusive package for the GPO-1. And, uh, yeah, as far as the way the model kit looks, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It's uh, a bit more accurate to the show than the uh, Master Grade GPO-1. The proportions are a little bit uh, more accurate to the show. And uh, the decals look really nice. I used some uh, extra decals that didn't come with the kit, like this GP on the chest here. But most of these are the ones that uh, came with the kit. Like this big one on the shield and the shoulders and things like that. Uh, this is a really nice, complex, uh, perfect grade. It's got loads of internal detail. Uh, the inner frame on this kit is fantastic in my opinion. And uh, just really has a lot to offer in terms of detail. Uh, so just anybody that really is a fan of the older perfect grades who uh, go more for detail rather than posability and gimmicks, um, I think this is really a perfect grade you might want to consider picking up. Uh, there are a couple of downsides, uh, and really they're only slight ones. Uh, my biggest concern is probably the fact that the full burner is uh, back heavy because of these large thruster pods on the back. And, I mean, as you can see, he's standing up fine right now, and he's not having to lean forward or anything. But uh, you will want to kind of take notice um, when you're displaying this guy to make sure that he's not somewhere that's up too terribly high that he could take a nosedive. Because um, he does tend to be a little bit back heavy. The ground type, the normal GPO-1, doesn't have any weight issues whatsoever. But the uh, full burner is slightly back heavy. Another small, small nitpick I have is with the thumb joint 
where the thumb is on a hinge rather than a ball joint. It just it slightly hinders the articulation of the thumb, but not too much to really complain about it. Uh, and uh, let's see, there was one more thing I was going to say. Posability is, I mean, it's it's really nicely articulated. Um, posability is good. It's just not as good as the newer perfect grades. But I think that comes down to Bandai uh, with the newer perfect grades focusing more on posability and gimmicks rather than where the older perfect grades, they were focusing on just enormous amounts of detail. But, uh, yeah, overall... This is a fantastic model kit. Another downside to it might be its price. Uh, I know some people, you know, a $300, actually not $300, I think this kit's only a, how much is this kit? 20,000 yen, so uh, it's the same price as Perfect Grade Zeta, even though GPO-1's box and the number of parts you get is a lot more than uh, Perfect Grade Zeta, but it's, uh, 5,000 yen less than Perfect Grade Double O Riser and Strike Freedom. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, seeing as how you get two Gundams in one box, this is going to be your better deal over one of those two. Unless you just happen to like uh, Double O Riser or Strike Freedom, then by all means, uh, check into those Perfect Grades. But, uh, yeah, this is just overall a really nice kit. And I definitely give it two thumbs way up. And if anybody is thinking about uh, getting a perfect grade, it might not be the best first perfect grade to get because it is really complex. It's a very large kit. Um, and I would say try one of the smaller perfect grades first, like uh, the Gundam Mark II or something like that. And But definitely, if you get confident in uh, building perfect grades, this is one you'll want to check out. So, I guess that about does it for the Perfect Grade GPO-1's review. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed building it and painting it. And I will see you guys next time.